Hi everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're going to take a look at efficient overall kits which I like to run myself. There's a bewildering amount of equipment in Tarkov and my usual guides tend to focus on one specific aspect, but today we're going to take a look at things a bit more generally. We'll be checking out a range of prices and availability, from entry level to mid game and late stage kits to give you some ideas of how to get going and progress. As always, use it as inspiration to create your own kits that work for your playstyle. So stick around and let's get going. Alright, so before we begin, I do want to point out that there are so many ways to put a kit together in EFT, and there are so many considerations to take into account. This is stuff like what kind of raid you're running, and what map with an expectation of the range you want to be fighting over, whether you're doing quests, what the progression is so far generally on your character which has an impact on what you can afford, or more importantly, what you can afford to lose, and even if you're running solo or with a team. There are many ways to do this, and what works for one player might not work for others, so these are just a few options that tend to work for me. First off, let's cover the early game, low trade levels, and not even the flea market potentially. Alright, so we're here in the stash, and we're going to start putting together some low level builds, but I think one of the most important things for players to think about to begin with is having a face cover on. So from level 1, right away, you're going to be able to buy from Ragman, if we just navigate to him here. You can buy this balaclava, it's really, really cheap. This is probably one of the best value items in the game that you can buy. Because without it, if you go and look to your character, your head is really, really obvious. You know, you're very obvious colour and people kind of know to spot it so if you're sticking that out of a bush it's going to get shot off. So what you want to do is go and buy one of these and stick one on and that's going to make your PMC so much harder to see especially when you're behind cover it kind of seems a bit silly if you're just going to be running through the open it doesn't really make a difference but if you're hiding or you're lying somewhere in a specific place or you're looking through a window or whatever like this is going to help an awful lot. Next up we want to talk about headsets. Everybody should be wearing an active headset the whole time, unless you're a more experienced player and you can get away with one of the higher tier helmets, you should always be wearing a headset. So the cheapest one that you can buy from Ragman level 1 is the GSSH. Uh, this thing gets a lot of crap in game from players, saying that it's super crunchy. Some people like it, a couple of people, a couple of masochists, people like me. I actually don't mind the GSSH, but this thing is better than nothing and it extends the hearing range by a long way. So if you go over to level 1 Magman again, you can buy these things for 13,000 from him. So you can get these even without the flea. Now, I personally would rather have a headset in raid than a helmet because I think it's going to save your life more often. Because the amount of distance that it increases on the range of hearing means that you will know where players are before they hear you if they're not wearing them. And it's such a huge advantage in this game. Sound is absolutely massive. So start wearing one, get used to the ranges, and it'll save your life. So this is kind of our base from where everything else springs. Now, in terms of weapons to start with, you do get a couple of things in your stash. If you're needing to buy something because either you've run out or you want to pick something that's particularly good, the one that I tend to run right from level one, if you go to Prapor and look down, he sells these AKS-74Us. Now, from stock, these are actually not that bad. They have 90 vertical recoil and 53 ergos. Actually, for a stock gun that's so cheap, is not terrible. And they're 28,000. And if you buy one of these, the beautiful thing is that at the beginning, you can't really buy any good ammo at all. Whereas these, from Prapor, if you unload the ammo here, you can see it gives you BP. Now, BP is actually half decent at the beginning. It's not a top tier round by any means, but it's definitely mid tier and it's much better than the crap that you can buy from him, which I think is T is the best that you can get. So this is actually all right if you're wanting to start out in the game. Next up is going to be on armor. If you need some armor, I think it's always worth wearing something. From Ragman level one, you can buy the Packer, which is 28,000. It is quite expensive, armor ranging from levels one to six. This is a two. Packer is not that great as far as armor goes. But it's better than nothing, it'll stop you from dying to buckshot scavs. What I would recommend is you buy one and you use this to begin with, and then you try to pick up some level 3 armour in raid if you can. Once you've moved up to level 2 Ragman, you can actually get a slightly better piece of armour, which is at level 3, which is this one here, which is the armour steel one, the 6B23. So this is level 3, this will save you from some more low tier rounds, some low tier rifle rounds, as well as shotguns that we were defending against before. But if we're actually wanting to get something better than that, I will normally go for the press, but usually you can only get this on the fleet or off scavs directly. So there's the press armor here. Let's just look it up. Zook 3 press. Now this guy is really, really good because of the material that it's made of. So it's made of ultra high weight polyethylene, which is one of the highest defending arm classes as well as highest repairability. So you can buy one of these. Let's just refresh this here. So you can get one for 22K off the flea go back into our stash and when you try to repair this it's only going to cost 6,000 so this is really really good like the effective durability which you can't really tell from here is from a combination of the 
durability of the armor itself and also the material that it's made of is much higher than it looks simply because of the material that it's made from. So this is very, very good. So if you can, swap that out with Zook or something similar from tier three, uh, whatever, whatever you can get your hands on. In terms of bags, I think really just use anything that you can get your hands on. Normally you're gonna end up running scav BPs because scavs run these a lot and you're gonna pick up loads of them. Put them in a stack and just use them whenever you need them. Once you've got a couple of scab BPs, you might have to start off with some MBSSs or a few of the other lower tier bags. But eventually you're just going to be running scab BPs the whole time once you've got a certain amount. So just pick them up and start stacking them and then be using them in your raids. Next up is on rigs. So I really like the bank robber. This also comes from Ragman level 1. This has got four slots of 2 by one And I actually still use it now sometimes because it's really quite decent, it's good value. You can fit two long mags in it of the two by one variety and a med in there and leave yourself a spare slot to be reloading into. So I think the bank robber rig is actually fine unless you wanna be bringing like loads of grenades and all sorts of other stuff, then I think it's a perfectly good kit to use and I still use it now into the end game if I'm running certain, uh, certain specific pieces. So definitely use this one. Now, once you've got the flea market, a whole world of possibility opens up to you. So one of the good guns here when you're looking at early game stuff is the SKS. Now, a lot of people really like the SKS. So there's this version here, which is the typically the brown one, and it's called the Simonov Semi-Automatic Carbine, and that's all it says. So you can buy these from Prapple right at the beginning of the game. As you can see, they're a lot, lot cheaper on the flea market than they are from Prapple himself normally because you, once you've got access to the flea, people just dump this stuff down there. But this version, I'm not a huge fan. You can't put a scope on this. And one of these, if it starts off as this gun, you can never change it into the type that allows you to put a scope on. So you need the hunting rifle type. This is typically comes in the kind of lighter wood version. Um, and the difference here is that you can actually mount, there's a mount on here. This one's missing it. Let's just buy one. These are normally really, really cheap on the flea market. So this one has a mount on it already. So you can see on the side, it's basically this thing, the OPSKDT. Now the beautiful thing about this is if you go and link search for this thing, then you can buy really any of the side mounts. So you can see here, you've got a bunch of mounts that you can, you can run and put stuff on top. But the great thing about this is for optics, you probably don't want this one, but the Zenit Belomo PSO, you can buy this off the flea market or you can buy it from Prapple level one and this thing goes straight on. And this is gonna give you a four times scope on a gun really, really early on. And this thing takes PS rounds for 762, which are also quite decent. So this is a, a good gun to use once you got to the flea market or if you just managed to kill some scavs that have got it. I, I like this gun, this, this is good. I, I remember early white, this thing basically makes you a king because um, you've got a four times scope and no one else does. The other weapon that I really like early game is the AKMS. So this thing also spawns on scavs quite often. So if we go and have a look at the AKMS here, or the AKMSN, doesn't really matter. This thing is normally dirt cheap on the flea markets. This one's about 19K. Make sure that you buy one that's actually working. I mentioned this before in other videos, but sometimes this one's actually just folded. Sometimes people take the stock off and it's really annoying because you can't buy it from traders. So just be careful of that. Once you've got the AKMS, this is, this is really good value. And because it uses PS rounds as well, it's actually kills people you know, early on, which is, which is really good. Now, if you want to attach a, a scope to this, um, which, which I always like, when you do a linked search, go and look for, you don't need an actual rail in sights. It's actually in iron sights. There's the Tactica Tula TT01, and this is from Prapor level two. So if you go and grab one of these, you need to remove the sights first, so remove the rear sight, and we pop this on. Then this gives you a little mini rail that you can attach red dots to. So if you go search linked search on the TTO one itself, you can use any of the bases for the other collimators. And if you go into sites, you can just see which ones are really cheap. So let's buy one of these. You can use any of them, to be honest. I don't really like this one. This is uh, not, not my favorite, but I, do, I don't mind this one at all. Um, the Pillard Weaver. I actually think it's okay. So you can then stick that on. And as you can see, we've got that on there, which is really nice. Now, the main issue with the SKS and with the AKMS at the beginning of the game um, before you have the flea market is that you can't buy the magazines for it. So the SKS ends up being top loading and the AKMS you can only buy 10 rounders for until you reach Prapple level two. So I guess it's the same thing with the TTO one, but Prapple level two kind of opens this up. So before then it can be a little tricky and you just kind of have to use what you can get your hands on. But after that, I tend to run one of these as a staple for a long time. Now there's a couple of little extra things that you can add to it. So we could just edit this preset for a second. There's two of the best value attachments for the AK, which are really cheap. 
Um, so we start off with 119 recoil and 36 ergo. If we flick down into the muzzle devices, there's this spike tactical Dynacomp, which is about three grand, which is really, really cheap for what it does. So, you know, minus 8%, I think, recoil. And then you've got the recoil pad here. So that's adding one ergonomics and uh, removing a bunch of stuff from the vertical recoil as well. So that takes us down to 99 recoil and 35. And this together, they cost about 6K. So this is really, really worthwhile. And the other thing that you can do if you don't really want to spend the money on a reflex sight, you can get rid of this. And instead, you can actually do this at level one. You can change over the handguard of the AK to the AK100 series handguard. So that's from Prapper 1. And then on this side, you can attach the NC Star tactical blue laser, which is from Skier 1. So you can do that right from the beginning. So this gives you a laser when you're hip firing and it makes it a lot easier to target. You can also just attach any foregrip that you want underneath as just a little bonus, but you don't really need to. At this point, it's really only going to be ergonomics that it helps with because without the other attachments, the foregrips tend to be kind of expensive for what they give. Next up, in terms of meds, now I always used to be a fan before, if we go over to Therapist, you do have to complete a quest to do the car first aid kit, but it's one of the very first quests in her series. So I always used to be a fan of buying a car first aid kit because it gives you a decent amount of health and an analogen painkiller. So you can get your painkiller effect, popping one in the pockets and popping one in the rig like this. Now, the issue with this is that now the car kit, they've removed it so that it doesn't heal bleeding anymore. So this is actually a really big deal because you're gonna have to take bandages with you if you don't want to bleed out and die. So in the light of that, I actually think it's probably worth switching over to the Solera kit. This thing not only heals light bleeds, but it also stops the new heavy bleed that's just come in. So this is really good, and you can make these in the hideout. So you should start making as many of these as you can. It'll only cost a little bit more than buying car kits from therapists, to be honest with you, and you can start making them straight away at the beginning of the game. So I would now advise using the Solera instead. I think, I think it's going to be better. For the secure container, if you're running an alpha with the standard account, usually what I tend to go for is a stack of bullets so that you can top load magazines. Normally I'll have two more magazines outside of the one in my actual weapon. You can then also take a long-term painkiller so that you're not going to lose it, something like a Vaseline, which does have a longer term effect than normal painkillers. This is 300 seconds versus the regular painkillers, which is only 100. But you don't want to be losing this every time you die, so stick this in a secure container. The other one is IFAX. These have such a high density of healing for one slot. 300 for one slot is really, really good. So keep that in there. So between these two, you've got a lot of heals now with the Salewa. And then finally, I normally put an Alu splint in here. So you get like five uses in case you break both your legs and need to try and try and get out. I mean, if you're trying to do a specific quest or something, in theory, you could move either the PS rounds or the Alu splint, depending on which one uh, you think is more valuable out into your pockets instead and have a key tool if you've got that far and put that in your secure container instead so you can go and do certain loot runs or keep the factory key on you for customs um, or factory itself. Um, but that's really up to you. There's kind of a few choices you can make. You're very limited with the alpha, so it can be, can be quite difficult. All right, let's talk about the mid game. So you're kind of getting Tarkov under your belt at this point and you want to move up into kind of the intermediate territory. So we're getting rid of the level three armors anymore. We don't need this. So if we go over to Ragman, typically the best one to buy from him is if you scroll down on level two, is this one. This is the one that so many people run and even some top level players run this simply because they just don't think that it's worth buying the extra protection because of all the armor piercing rounds that are in the game now and kill you very, very quickly no matter what. So people tend to buy this to protect themselves against PS rounds, buckshots, scavs, generally various different bits and pieces of ammo. Um, and the beautiful thing about the 6B3TM from Ragman is that it also acts as a rig too. So it's got these nice slots here and a couple of slots below. So you can actually take some decent stuff with you. Now, you're still probably gonna be wanting to take your Salewa kit with you in here and a couple of magazines, but this gives you a bit of extra room if you wanna take some grenades or whatnot. In terms of helmets, it's still up to you. The jury's kind of out on whether helmets are worth it or not. Pretty much people buy them for the ricochet chance. The one that I still recommend now, I used to run the tin helmet the whole time, which is this one. But the problem with this is uh, what a lot of people don't realize is the, the decrease in ergonomics that it gives, minus 13%. This doesn't really matter at the beginning. So you could just wear it for the high ricochet chance at the start because you're not really running any builds or, or ergonomic stuff. But as soon as you start to try and upgrade some of your builds, add a few attachments, this is going to really drag on your overall performance. So what you're much better off running is instead this one here, which is the Ratnik. Now this is a bit more expensive expensive to buy from Ragman himself. Um, but the great thing about this is that you can search for this on the fleet and have a look here. So it, it, I find it just easier to use the flea market for various barters. So what you could do is you can trade this for two bleaches. So as we remember now, and as you can see here, 
these are about 30 grand. But if you right click here and go search filter by item, bleaches are actually only about 10K. So we can buy two bleaches like this, and then we can go back to the barter and trade them in like that. So there you go. Now we've got a helmet that's level three. This thing only decreases the ergonomics by 2% rather than 13% with the tin helmet. And this thing's a bit better and you can still wear a headset with it. So I think this is the helmet that you should be running most of the time if you want to run one. If you don't want to run one, then fair enough. If you're going to be running a map like Woods, I can see why you might not want to. Most players are running really, really high caliber rounds and they will just shoot you through the face and you're going to die anyway. All right, so next up, let's talk a little bit about guns, everybody's favorite topic for the mid game. So the first one that we're going to talk about a little bit is the SVDS, which I think is an amazing gun. They are expensive on the flea market, but the fact that this fires effectively the most in bullet at semi-auto is completely insane. Um, this gun is amazing. It takes the PSO scope. If you want to run a budget sniper, I would probably just run this. You could put whatever rounds you want in it, really. Maybe avoid the the cheapest possible round um, because it's a tracer. But LPS or anything above that, SNB, they're all good. It's very, very good gun. I would use this. It's, uh, it's, it's excellent. I love the SVD and I've had some great times with it. Next up on the list is the Hunter, everybody's favorite rat weapon. So this thing is much cheaper than the SVD usually. So this is about 46k. This is usually cheaper. This is normally about 30 grand. The reason why this is so expensive right now is because the patch has just been released and the new suppressor has come out for the Hunter. So this is making this even more flexible than it was before. I expect this will probably go back to about 30k again. But the Hunter's brilliant. It can also take uh, the PSO side scope as well, as well as any of the other mounts if you want to do anything funky with it. Um, you can get up to 10 round mags with it, and this fires not quite the biggest round, um, like the most in style 762-54R, but it's the one below the 762-51, which is really good. Um, even M80 is decent for this, and the good thing about this is you can buy that from Peacekeeper level 2. So once you have access to M80, this gun will start to kill people, and, and is very, very good, and is cheap to mod with, with a basic scope as well. Five seconds before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this in the future. All right, let's carry on with the video. Now the next one, if you're more into assault rifles like me, I'm not a huge semi-auto fan, but the next one up is the AKM. So the AKM itself is normally fairly expensive on the flea market, so it's normally about 40k. But the one thing to watch out for on this one is that you can trade in three cans of two shonka for an AKM. So if you go filter on this, you can see actually at the moment they're quite expensive, but you've got to keep an eye out. Sometimes this is down at like seven or eight thousand, um, and you can effectively get an AKM for a very very cheap price. The good thing about this for the mid game is that on the AKM itself, you can take BP rounds. Now you can craft BP in the hideout, and that is a very, very good round for the mid game. It'll rip through a lot of armor and it even deals with about level five. It will absorb some of the shots from on a level five piece of armor, but after two or three shots, you've smashed their armor down completely and, and the shots going straight through. So it is very good. The only thing that makes me not figure that this is a high tier weapon is the fact that it doesn't have quite as good pen as some of the other rounds in the game and the fire rate is one of the lowest out of all the guns at 600 rpm and so just because of that for me I mean, there's a lot of people that disagree with me on this but for me i don't think i can quite justify putting it into the top tier category because the recoil is a bit higher than the other platforms the ammo is a little bit less in penetration and the fire rate is quite slow and because of all of those factors together it's not any of those individual factors i don't like it's all of them combined together so lower pen with a higher fire rate is still okay and a high pen with a low fire rate is okay but this is just it's just on the threshold for me where it doesn't quite make sense but a lot of people run them with a lot of success so you know don't take my word on it and try it out for yourself and if it works for you then more power to you so the next gun i want to talk about is the mp7 we're kind of moving down through the round energies here so from the really really big bullets all the way down to uh, the submachine guns the mp7 is still very good so you have the mp7a2 and the mp7a1 these two are very similar, except the difference is the MP7A1 comes with its own vertical foregrip that can't be changed and has a recoil of 50 when you've got the stock out. The A2 doesn't have a vertical foregrip at all, but starts with a vertical recoil of 50 anyway. So you can actually add a fo another foregrip to this and improve the performance. Outside of this, they're very, very similar. And uh, the one annoying thing about the MP7A1 is that every time you try to throw a grenade or do anything, your PMC has to fold this thing away first, which can be quite frustrating. But that's where you get a, a good discount for this. Now, 35 gram for the MP7 is amazing. Uh, the crux to this is buying some of the good ammo for it. I really like the subsonic ammo, which you get from mechanic to be honest like the other than the the cheapest ammo in the game for the mp7 all of the ammo is quite decent now if you're looking at top tier this this gun actually works all the way up to top tier 
because if we just go back and have a quick look, so it's just linked search this to see what ammo we can use with it. So the Action SX is the bad one um, and isn't really worth using. I wouldn't bother with this. Then you've got Subsonic. I actually quite like Subsonic. So it's quite cheap for Mechanic, but you have to be at level three with him. So this thing gives you minus 22% recall, which is quite nice, honestly. I, I think it makes a difference. And But the pen isn't quite as good as FMJ, which is kind of in the middle. And this is a very, very decent round, um, which you can get from Peacekeeper. And then the top tier one is APSX, which is very, very expensive. But to be honest, it is one of the best fast fire rounds in the entire game it's like right up there with some of the other really powerful rounds and the fact that this thing fires on such an insane fire rate makes this an incredibly good gun finally i'd be amiss if i didn't note my baby which is the mp5 sd from peacekeeper level 2 so if we go and look at him here you can't buy this directly on the flea unless someone has built one purpose built because it comes up under mp5s in general but this thing you can get pre-built from peacekeeper and this comes in with an integrated suppressor now at stock this thing has 26 recoil which is absolutely outrageous so you really have two choices here you can either run this with ap 6.3 rounds which makes it decent and, it, and it's very good given the fact that it has such a low recoil the rounds just go where you put them and it's fantastic you can buy a rail for the top and a ring mount if you want to add a laser and that's really it that's all you can do with this thing and even though it's 473 dollars as base given that there's really no modding that needs to be done to it, it actually ends up being very, very valuable. You can run it with some of the other lower tier rounds as well if you're just aiming for, for faces. And given the, re the vertical recoil on this weapon, it, it is actually possible because of that. So normally I wouldn't allow myself to be using lower tier rounds than that because I don't think it's worth it, especially if you're spraying lots of body shots, etc. But with 26 vertical re recoil, you can almost get away with it. I don't tend to do this. I normally use 6.3, but you can give it a go. It might work for you. Bear in mind you have to complete the quest Scrap Metal for Peacekeeper before you can actually buy this. I thought I should note that. Alright, so moving on to high tier kits. My favourite weapon for high tier, to be honest, has been the M4 for a while. This gun is so good and once you've got some decent trade levels, you can actually get this thing to really, really good recoil levels without really even trying, to be honest. I mean, this I've got to 57 and this is quite a budget version. Um, you can get it crazy low if you if you try and put loads of money into it. Now, what I do like to do when I'm running hard here is have one high capacity mag up here, and then you have two 30s there. So this is quite value. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like the TacTech um, is because it's got decent slots for putting everything in. It doesn't have a four slot, so when I die, someone can't take my helmet and, and put it in it. So it kind of limits the amount of damage and things come back from insurance a bit more. The other weapon that I think is really, really good at kind of a high tier that I, I like to use sometimes is the MDR. Uh, this thing's very good because it uses the, the big bullet. Um, it doesn't need that much modding. It has very, very high ergonomics to begin with. I'm not such a fan of the 5.56 version. It's very, very budget, but I don't think it's really worth it. Um, so I much prefer using this version with the the bigger the bigger bullets. It's full auto, um, doesn't have the best recoil of all time, and has 20 round magazines, but it can take the decent wave suppressor if you want, or loads of the other ones that fit Western style um, muzzles. So that's quite decent. Just on the M4, I think one of the reasons why this ends up being so good late game is you can buy a 55 a one very cheaply, which is a very good round. It's not the best round uh, because the, the best round is M9 M5, but M9 M5 is ridiculously expensive. Currently, it's about $14, whereas this is more like two and a half from Peacekeeper and from Skier. You can buy it between, I think it's like 250 from Peacekeeper and then like 300 rubles from Skier, which is really, really good for what it is. It's not quite as good as some of the ARs on the 545 side for the AK platform but given the higher fire rate I think it kind of makes up for it and the, the rounds are so cheap you you feel very comfortable just spraying with it. In terms of other pieces of the equipment you can upgrade the headsets if you don't really like the GSSHs and you prefer something else like Sordians or Contacts or, or whichever and then on helmets moving up to level 4 helmets is kind of a decision that you can make. I, I To be honest I wouldn't ever run the top tier helmets for economic reasons, I'd only ever run that for increasing survivability, like you might be doing the guide quest where you, you're not allowed to die. Um, outside of that, moving up to level 4 probably isn't even worth it, to be honest. I tend to use these helmets when I have them lying around from other people. I don't normally buy them, and myself, I tend to, be, I tend to continue running the Ratnik on until quite late game. In terms of armor, you really want to be using level 5. I do actually find that level 5 saves me quite a bit. Once you've completed a lot of Ragman's quests, you can then buy them from him directly um, from level 3, which costs 113k for these gazelles. Now, gazelle is like the entry level into level 5. 
the durability is awful and gets smashed after a few shots but this will take a shot of lps or, or something like that and save you and really mitigate the damage on, on your thorax but just don't count on bees surviving for that long and they don't really repair that well either so it's really a judgment call the one, one that i really like is the tac tac so a lot of people overlook the materials in this game like i kind of mentioned before and this is made of the best material that you can get which is uh, ultra high rate polyethylene again so even though it's only got 50 durability this is actually a lot higher than it looks now there's only one other piece of armor that's like this as well which is a cpc which has got 10 more uh, durability but often it ends up being 50 percent or twice the price because it's that little bit better and is kind of top top tier now the one amazing thing about the tactic again is that you don't need a separate rig for this and it's got a couple of nice slots on here that are really really handy so just touching back again on secure containers if you're a standard account player that's managed to work their way up through the punisher series up to epsilon which is a quest that i highly recommend then typically you'll want to be putting a few different bits and pieces in here so rather than just having the four slots now you can keep with you the same the painkillers the rounds the splint and the ifac and then because of a splint you want to take the cms with you so that you can undo your black limbs and reheal them again the cms is not as good as the serve 12 but it does unblack and that's really all you need the best thing about this is that you can unblack your stomach that used to be awful before these were introduced into the game and then you're probably either going to want to have a sick case if you've got that far if not a docs case up here so you can keep your keys in and other players dog tags potentially bitcoins whatever you whatever you find so that's that tends to be quite handy if you're an EOD player, clearly you have one more slot, so you might want to put a stim in there or something. Uh, this really depends on personal preference. You might want to use a propotol, or you want to have a green stim so that you can heal in combat. You don't have to worry too much about bleeds immediately uh, when you're fighting. Alternatively, you could decide instead of having a, an alu splint and a CMS, you could just use the serve 12. The serve 12 can heal breaks in the same way that the alu splint can except it does take a long long time but it means that you then get to use the serve 12 instead which is a lot better because the maximum health of those particular limbs goes up a lot more than it does with the cms so the cms just doesn't heal anywhere near as much so the serve 12 is overall better for that but it does feel a bit wasteful just to be healing breaks with with the serve 12 but it is definitely a choice that you can make the one other thing you might want to think about is that if you have red rebel and you're going to be playing on either woods or on reserve you can bring a power cord with you, which is obviously going to remove another two slots out of your secure container. And if you're wearing a rig like the Tactech, then you can get out of the, the cliff exit on both of those maps without having to remove body armor or try and fit it in your bag somehow or whatever so you can keep all your loot. So that might mean that you need to push some of your stuff out of this again. So you might need to keep a splint in your pocket or something instead so that you can keep the power cord with you. Maybe you need to move the IFAC out as well so you can just have the, the power cord um, in your secure container. But that's really finessing it and that's when it comes down to personal preference really about what you want to do, whether you actually want to leave out of that extract or not. But it's just something to bear in mind for Shoreline and Reserve because Red Rebel gives you that option. And especially when you're using a a rig like this uh, it really makes it much easier to to leave especially on reserve the red rebel extract is one of the easier ones on, on reserve to leave from so hopefully this has given you some inspiration on how to make your builds and put them together and what you might want to use remember don't let anybody tell you really too much about it experiment with stuff and work it out for yourself and figure out what works for you because different people like different things so you'll figure it out over time but the only way you're going to find out is by is by trying stuff and experimenting and that's that's ultimately the fun of tarkov so remember to sub and hit the bell if you want to see more. You can also follow me on Twitter and I stream on Twitch on Wednesdays and Saturday evenings UK time. So until then, I'll see you next time. And as always, have fun in your raids. Right, let's see how this goes down. First time ever using the Ash 12. Whoa! I got incredibly lucky. Oh my god. Ah, oh, dude. Wow, that was that was crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, literally shot as I spawned in. That was nuts.
That was nuts. Did kill this guy though. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what fun. What fun. What did I get killed by?